The next gimbal in the list is the DJI OM4. It is the most popular gimbal out there, but it's not the best one. There is a huge bummer with the DJI OM4. In this episode, I'll evaluate five of the most popular gimbals on the market at the current moment and we'll evaluate them by five criteria. The motor strength, the ease of changing the gimbal modes, the mobile application, can it handle big phones and the price. Hey there, my name is Gabriel and on my channel we'll find a lot of mobile video content, photo content and other interesting things, so don't forget to smash the like button. In my hands I'm holding Hohem iSteady V2 gimbal. This is the smallest and the lightest gimbal that can handle the iPhone 12 Pro Max with a bumper case. I never seen other gimbal that size that can handle my iPhone without any problems. So the motor strength is really good. So that gimbal gets one point for motor strength. This gimbal is so small that there is even no trigger button, but you have several buttons in front and depending how many times you press them, you can change the gimbal modes. It takes a little bit of time to remember the gimbal modes, how many times you have to press the button, but once you get familiar with the gimbal, it's really easy to change the different modes. So the gimbal gets one more additional points for the shortcuts of changing the gimbal modes. The next thing is the application. Now their application is surprisingly well built. It's not perfect, it's far from perfect, but it's good enough. So I'll give 0.5 points for the mobile application. The next point is can it handle big phones Without any problem, this small gimbal is handling my iPhone 12 Pro Max, as I said earlier. Now, why I'm giving two different points, one for motor strength and can it handle big phones? Very often, the gimbal motors are very strong and they can handle the motor, but the problem is with the clip. Very often, the clip is not designed well enough to handle big phones, especially with bumper cases. And with that gimbal, you don't have any issues handling your iPhone 12 Pro Max with a bumper case. The only thing I had to modify a little bit on that gimbal to handle the bumper case is to unglue here the rubber. Uh, when I peeled the rubber off, I had enough place to put my bumper case in that gimbal. The next point is the price. The gimbal sells for around 150 euros. That's not cheap, that is the price of DJI Osmo 4. The very strong point of that gimbal is that you have a dedicated tracking sensor. That is the best tracking sensor I've ever seen. It's much better than using the phone tracking. That gimbal locks on you and doesn't let you go. It's that good. The only disadvantage of the tracking sensor is that it works only with the front camera. If you want to use it with your back cameras, you have to rotate the phone. It still works, but it's not ideal because you're covering the screen. The ideal solution would be if you can grab the sensor and rotate it back and forth. Now, what is the biggest issue with that small gimbal? Because the gimbal is so small, you don't have a range of motion. Here, the arm is very restricted. It goes around 15 to 20 degrees. And uh, when you're panning up and down, you can really hit the motors if you don't do it very smooth and slow. So that's the biggest minus of that gimbal. It's getting solid four points. The next gimbal in the list is the Zion Smooth X. I bet I pronounce it wrong. Zion, 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 Zion. Zion Smooth X. That it's a telescopic gimbal, that it's something between a selfie stick and a gimbal. The price point of that thing is amazing. It costs only around 60 dollars or 60 euros. So one point for the price. Motor strength, it's okay. -ish. The motor strength is not perfect. So 0.5 for motor strength. It managed to handle my big iPhone 12 Max Pro, but I could feel that the motors are really struggling in some positions. There were shortcuts to change the gimbal mode. So here we are getting one point. The mobile application is getting 0.5 points. It's not perfect. It's good enough, it's there, but there are many things that can be desired out of that application. So 0.5 for the application. Can it handle big phones? Oh, okay, it's handling them, but it's on the edge. So I'll give 0.5 points for handling big phones. So in total for that gimbal, we are getting 3.5 points. Can I recommend you that gimbal? In general, the gimbal is okay -ish. The price point is really on point, so it's cheap, but it's not the perfect gimbal if you want to do crazy cinematic stuff. It works really well with high-end phones with good stabilization, but if you have cheaper phones, the stabilization is not that perfect. If you're a selfie stick lover and you want to have a selfie stick, but also to have a gimbal inside of the selfie stick, that product is for you. If you want to go heavy on the cinematic side, that's not the perfect gimbal. The other gimbals later in the video are much better. Next we have the Moza Mini MX. That is my favorite gimbal among all of them, but there is a huge disadvantage. It cannot handle big phones. That gimbal is really small, 
the motors are really strong, but it cannot handle phones with bumper cases and it cannot handle my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is a huge bummer because I really love that gimbal. It's really easy to change the modes, so one point for that. The motor strengths are getting one point, the price is around $100, so we are getting one point for the price. We get zero points for handling big phones. And for the mobile application, I give 0.3 points. The mobile application is mostly okay, but something is missing. But the gimbal is so well made that most of the time I'm using the gimbal without the application. So in total, we get 3.3 points for that gimbal. But I heard that Moza will release something for the mobile market very, very soon. So I'm really excited. Are they preparing a new mobile gimbal? And if that's the case, I'll definitely grab it and try it because I really love their gimbals. The next gimbal in the list is the DJI OM4. It is the most popular gimbal out there, but it's not the best one. There is a huge bummer with the DJI OM4. It cannot handle big phones. It, cannot hand it handles the big phones. The motors are strong enough. It cannot handle phones with bumper case. I don't want constantly to take out my phone from the bumper case, mount it on the gimbal. If I accidentally drop it, my phone will be finito. Like, that's so much money. I don't want to risk that amount of money. I already dropped my phone so many times. Here on the screen protector, I had a huge crack. So if you're a filmmaker, if you're creating content constantly with your phone, the chance of you dropping the phone is really much higher than regular people who are just using the phone to make phone calls. I really cannot believe that DJI made such a huge mistake with their clamp. The magnetic clamp cannot clip well the phones with the bumper cases. So what the DJI had to do is to offer additional clamp to be purchased which is a little bit bigger that can handle phones that are a little bit thicker. I'm giving to the gimbal one point for the motor strength because the motors are really strong. 0.5 points for handling big phones. I'll give zero points for the ease of changing the gimbal modes. There is no easy way how you can change the gimbal modes. DJI is forcing you to use their mobile application. The mobile application, I'll give one point to it because it's the best on the market. It's not great. The application is far from great, but it's the best application on the market. And for the price, the DJI is getting 0.8 points. The price quality ratio is really good. I wish the gimbal was a little bit cheaper. As you can see, the DJI OM4 didn't get a lot of points and even has less points than some of the gimbals before that. But still, compared to all the three gimbals before it, it is the best cinematic gimbal to that moment. There is one gimbal that is better, is the Zion Smooth Q3. It costs only around 100 euros, which is much cheaper than the DJI OM4. That's why I gave 0.8 points to the DJI OM4, because the Zion gives you the same quality on one third of the price. So that's a huge difference. After that, with Zion, you can easily change the different gimbal modes. That's a huge advantage because the default camera application, especially on the iPhone, is the best camera. No third party camera app can compare to the default camera application. That's why it's so important to be able to change the gimbal modes from the gimbal itself, not to jump between the applications back and forth. And that was my biggest struggle with the DJI OM4. The mobile application, as before with the Zion, 0.5 points. Can it handle big phones with bumper cases? Yes, I'll give one point to the Zion about that. The motors are really strong and the clamp is a little bit bigger. So in total, that gimbal is getting 4.5 points. The only points deducted is for the mobile application. That is the best mobile cinematic gimbal you can get at the current moment. If you're hunting for a gimbal, go for the Zion. It's the best thing you can get on the market for the best price. I hope that video helped you to choose your next mobile gimbal. Now don't forget to smile, destroy the like button, destroy the subscribe button, share that video with your friends and see you in the next episode.